If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. And if you need any code cards, make sure you check out Potown Store for automatic email delivery and use code TABLEMONTH for 5% off all your purchases. If you're from Europe, MealyBotsGaming.com is a great option to get your cards from. They have all sorts of sealed products, merchandise, and all the sets available from Pokemon Sun and Moon upwards, including the latest Hidden Fate set. Don't forget to use Tailmon code when checking out to get a further 5% off from your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TC Worlds 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. We are going to be continuing with our coverage of Nox build decks and then next week I think we are going to be moving on um, to full coverage of expanded decks as we um, as we move on to the next part of the season in North America where expanded events will be taking place over in Richmond, Virginia and um, Portland so make sure to be on the lookout for that I'll be very um, happy to switch it up and bring you guys some new content but for today we are going to be playing some other decks that did pretty well we are going to be playing um, the second place speaker round which you have right here and we are also going to be playing with the top eight um, Blacephalon list by Hunter Butler and we are going to take a look at Alex Garcia's top 64 Malamar list as well. <laughs> Thank you Alex for being here. And so this Pikram, um, it's pretty standard. I feel like um, you could argue that 55 out of 60-ish cards or so are pretty standard in Pikram already in terms of uh, viability, in terms of consistency. Christoph, thanks so much for being here. But um, this new Farfish um, that John Eng did indeed decide to add to his deck is a pretty interesting inclusion because the attack collect obviously it might help in a pinch to just get those two extra cards but realistically this is here for Tool Buster which does 20 damage and before doing damage you discard all Pokemon Tool cards from your opponent's active Pokemon. And if you discard a Pokemon tool card in this way, this attack does 70 more damage for a total of 90. So you are one KOing things like Jirachi that has um, Jirachi that has a, um, a an escape board attached. You are also KOing a Giratina that has a spell tag attached that's self-damaged. So pretty nice inclusion, but most importantly, you are able to remove um, things like the Lightning Fairy Charm from Gardevoir and Sylveon to make it so that you don't need to just go in with the um, with the lights on her labs every time. Outside of that we have the very standard Pigram using full blitz to power up attackers and tackle to threaten the bench. We have the Choo Choo to paralyze with tandem shock and also to lightning right GX for a bunch of damage. Henry thank you so much for being here how are you doing? And we have our Jirachi engine supported by the Denis. We have Mute to protect the bench, Seraura etc. So pretty standard list I would say. Um, the split of stadiums is also pretty good. Um, we have the the four stadiums now it's, as I mentioned in some of my videos before the stadium wars are in full swing and um, we are seeing increased counts of stadiums. Pigram used to play like sometimes two usually three and now it's up to four plus the stadium nav so pretty interesting to see the meta develop into this big big stadium war so yeah these are the three decks that we have for today let's go ahead and play the pigram deck see if we can find some jirachis to ko with our farfish some nice situations to utilize it and we'll see what happens all right so we seem to be up against the mirror match without farfish i don't know how important farfish will actually be Right, Farfetch is here in place of Zapdos, so it does have more utility than Zapdos against Gardevoir Sylveon. And look at this absolutely beautiful, beautiful hand. Um, <laughs> we'll probably be looking for a new match sometime very soon. Hola, mi amorcito. Estamos en vivo. Estamos en vivo. We are live here with Roxy herself. <laughs> <laughs> 
You were saying something about something very beautiful. So my my hand. Look about. at my hand. You tell me. You you don't play Pokemon very much, but look at this hand. Is it good or is it bad? Um, it's good. No, it's really bad. There's no supporter, no Tetene to draw. I can do absolutely nothing with this hand, <laughs> other than bench and attach and pass. It's just really shiny. It is a very shiny hand, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a very shiny hand. <laughs> That's true, it is very shiny and very beautiful hand. But not in the sense, not in the beautiful sense that we want it to be. Alright. So my opponent starts off with a Stella Wish, finds the radar. So he will be off to a better start than. I will, not the biggest of deals, right? Not the biggest of deals. Not the biggest of deals, but I mean, after having such an underwhelming turn one, my expectations of this game are just very, very low. And Alex, indeed. He's been on a pretty nice roll. He's been making day two left and right lately. <laughs> All right. So my opponent did lose a few switches, a custom catcher. So the paralysis from Choo Choo might come into play at some point. Seems like he will end up whiffing the turn one attack, which is great. Based on the fact that my hand really sucks. I mean, I do have a bunch of cards I can top deck to maybe get myself back into a game. But no, we just see a pass from my opponent. That is not one of the cards, however, that we can top deck to get back into the game. Not gonna give up just yet. My opponent didn't have the most spectacular start either, but it does have Jirachi to help him out. There's a stadium now. And double tails. So, doing things, I guess, not in the wrong order per se, but why attach energy before Stella wishing, before flipping? There's no need. My opponent in a rush here to try and eliminate me will end up using Coco, attaching energy onto the Dene and Pigram, probably knocking out my Dene, hopefully with Tack Bolt. That would be pretty good for him to just go overboard. Never mind. There's the Electro Power, and we see the Tetene. So, what could we possibly top deck here that would be helpful? The two switches gone are super useful. Uh, there's my opponent's Choo Choo, so that's bad. If I don't top deck something good, I'm just gonna concede. Because hitting for 80 is just gonna be very, very underwhelming. Very, very underwhelming here. See a Volkner. That's the first supporter my opponent has played over the course of um, two turns. At least you can use Tandem Shock if you top deck something good. Not really. I, I mean, I can use Tandem Shock for 80 though. For 80. If I could paralyze, then maybe, maybe I'd be in an okay -ish spot because of the two switches gone, but it's not looking very good. I am getting the concede bottom ready. And yeah. Let's just move away from this game. There's no point in continuing. Let's just find a better spot where we don't draw a completely unplayable hand. Complete like I didn't even have the possibility to custom catcher for a card. Maybe I could have used custom catcher for one. I don't know, but uh, I was not getting anywhere with that. I was not getting anywhere with that. Okay. So now psychic fire lightning colorless. I have no idea what that is. I actually have no idea what that combination of cards would be. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? What the heck?
Yeah, it didn't happen. No one, no one saw it, right? No one. That never happened, Alex. Indeed, that never ever happened. All right. All right, now that's a start you can work with, right? That is certainly a start you can work with. We know the Coco Prism is in price. We don't even have to search for it. I'd say my chances of getting a turn one attack of are decently high-ish. Perhaps not so much. Okay, so this is Blacephalon. What's the colored list though? Is my punch just playing Persian here? I mean, the fact that he started Poipole is really good because then that means I have the possibility to maybe skip B-string. The Jirachi start is definitely good. Definitely, definitely good. Oops. There's a Poipole. All right. And I even get the switch already, so... Let's go ahead and Volkner. I definitely would like the radar and the energy, I think. I think that makes the most sense, right? That makes the most sense. I already have a switch. So off of the off of the Stella Wish, I'm hoping to hit an energy switch. And if I don't then I'm hoping to, I don't even know, something to thin perhaps. I'll discard the two lightning. I do need to draw lightning as well off of my next top deck. Uh, possibly, well, no. If I get the turn one attack off, that's great. Uh, let's do like this. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this and then I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go Stellar Wish, and I do find the Energy Switch. That's actually crazy. So now all I'm missing to get this turn one KO is an Energy off of the Dead Change, which should be the easiest card to hit, right? Of course, um, Weaving Energy is not completely out of the question. But this was basically the absolute perfect hand I could have asked for. Very, um, very interesting comparison to the previous, right? To the previous um, situation where we, in fact, just weren't able to um, to get exactly what we wanted. Okay, so my Pigram should be able to survive here, right? I think I'll, my Pigram should absolutely be able to survive. So I'm going to hide the fact that I have the perfect cards for the Tack Bolt GX by attaching to the bench. Yeah, I don't expect to be reset stamped here. And if I do, I still have decent chances, I figure, to hit the cards I need. So by doing this, I'm trying to make it so that my opponent doesn't go for the confusion. And uh, I should have powered up the Pikaram. Or, um, like, if it goes for Burst GX, that's the dream, right? That is indeed the dream. With my opponent's setup and the fact that he hasn't gotten, like, a super out-of-this-world start, I feel like even if I activate B-String, it's not the end of the world. So we see the Beast Energy attached to the active. Ooh, by committing that Beast Energy, wow, did he really draw... Beast Energy, the Dene, and four fires. That's a crazy hand to draw. So we see the Ditto. We do see the Ditto. I'd imagine we're gonna get confused here. Yep, there was a Bursting Burn, so... Uh, I guess I could have... I was just hoping to stop him from... I was like trying not to encourage the Mew, right? That was my goal. So... Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bench Zerara, and then I'm gonna retreat into the Jirachi. 
And then I'm gonna Stellar Witch first. If I find a switching card, then I Volkner for the Tax Switch. If I find a Tax Switch or Energy Switch, then I Stellar Witch for, um, I mean, I Volkner for the switching card. So by finding that, I will be able to just get the Tack Bolt here and be one or two prizes away from winning. I don't wanna play my Thunder Mountain just yet. I don't think, or do I? Maybe I do. So I'm gonna attack switch from this person. This might have seemed unnecessary and overly complicated, but I wanted to discourage my opponent from playing down a, from playing down a Mew, if he even plays it at all. So then, yeah, I already committed the energy here, so I do have to play the Thunder Mountain. And then we go attack Bolt. And I believe I KO the Nagnadel. So if I KO the Dene, I'm basically saying I don't care what you promote, I win. Uh, you can't promote either of these guys. Yeah, I'll just go after the Dene. If I get Reese's time to one, then so be it. Hello, Reggie Bang. Thank you so much for being here. Four prizes on turn two. After taking a prize on turn one, to say this is pretty broken would be an understatement. <laughs> And my opponent simply draw passes here. So we'll go full blitz and there's the game. That was a crazy three turn game, right? This is how bad Plus Evelyn used to lose against Pikram before um, Guzma left the format. Because you would actually purposely Guzma one prizer, power up yourself and then Tack bolt for um, for the B string skip. Now it's much harder to do because finding double custom catcher is not exactly easy, and getting a turn one Pigram is also not exactly easy. But it was possible with our super good hand this time around. Now we see Nubi up against Malamar, I would imagine. Now we do seem to be up against Malamar. Full Blitzeroni indeed, Alex. Full Blitzeroni indeed. We get another Mulligan. That's the third game in a row where we have Mulligan, I believe. Which is pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. All right. So we are going to start with a Farfetch'd. So no surprise Farfetch'd from us to our opponent. This will probably discourage my opponent from playing down an escape board on his Jirachi. There's a Jirachi, unless my opponent doesn't even bother to read the Farfetch'd. So that's definitely kind of annoying. Well, never mind. There's the tool. So that's good news, right? Wait, what? Okay, so trying to thin his hand for Lily, I'd imagine, right? Yep, there it is. So despite the mulligans, my opponent wasn't able to my opponent wasn't able to um, get some very good cards after the mulligans. We see a Pokegon, we might see an Inca established. We will have the counter stadium immediately, pretty much. My opponent already retreated. Knows the Jirachi is going down. So decides to... Um, decides to bench another one. Also benches an Orinke. But it seems like we are safe from a turn 2 attack. And we will be able to get a turn 1 KO. So both pretty good things. I'm going to go ahead and grab the radar and the energy. I will find out that Coco Prism and Thunder Mountain are not priced, which is really, really, really good news. Um, I generally did not realize I already had um, two radars <laughs> in my hand, so that radar should have that third radar should have definitely been a Pokecom, 100%, to establish the um, the Coco Prism. So that's a slight mistake on my part. 
or at the very least a Jirachi, so I could take advantage of this escape board. I kind of like attaching the skateboard to the Farfetch'd... Eh. Yeah, there's no better target, really. And I'll go ahead and do a change. That was a bit silly on my part, though. That was a bit silly. Um, decent dish hand. I do manage to find the Pogicom. So I figure I can't go for that just yet, although I have no lighting in the disc. Well, now nah, let's just take the KO with Tool Buster. We do this for the escape board, not a big deal. Um, so you do bypass spell tag with spell buster. I mean tool buster, not spell buster, tool buster, which is pretty nice. Imagine farfetch time turn one. Well, that's exactly what we did. Farfetched on turn one. Pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. So my opponent has back-to-back -back shrines. Probably will not be able to um attack this turn which is great news for us right great news for us definitely a big misstep on my part though with that not grabbing the coco we'll see i mean i can't go after the malamar and then just get another ko with tool buster i honestly don't mind that at all I don't think I mind that at all, especially if there's no Giratina to which he attaches energy to. No, he just attaches to the Inke and we see the pass. So we do get a little bit of damage from the Shrine, not the biggest of deals. <laughs> okay, I even top deck the double custom catcher. All right. So I do like going for the Stadium Nav, honestly. I don't mind for more shrine damage hitting me. I'm just gonna grab the light center labs. I don't wanna grab the power plant. I'll go ahead and do this. And then I'll go ahead and do this. And then I'll attach. So I'm gonna knock out the Malamar. I do like having Zerora. I also think I'd rather have the Mew in the deck for later. Just grab the Hoopa. And yeah, I think this is solid. After Farfetch'd, Hoopa can come in and put in a lot of work. Not with this hand, however. So hopefully we get a decent price off of Tool Buster. To get another Pokecom to potentially find that Coco Prism Star. Second Electro Power. Electro Power seems to not be that useful anymore, I think. Like against Tag Team, it's really hard to get three of them to really get a big KO on them and then against um, decks like Malamar or even Blastephalon you only ever really need like one at one point so definitely less useful than before so we see the spell attack getting attached uh, not having an energy is annoying that's for sure Not getting a KO this upcoming turn will be a pretty big um, loss of tempo, right? Will be a pretty big loss of tempo if it does happen. Hello, Iberserk. All good. How about you? How are you doing? How are you doing? All is good in my end. All right. And Team Polyswag, thank you so much. Two years subscription. Thank you so much, Alex. That's a long time. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're a founder indeed. I definitely I knew you and um you and Byron were founders. Um you were one of the first people to subscribe to me when I announced I was a Twitch partner back in 2017. Yeah. Thank you so much for the support throughout these two years, Alex. Very, very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. All right, so my opponent's Viridian Forest is actually extremely nice and extremely useful because that does mean I will be able to full blitz away at that Jirachi. 
and continue the chaos from here. So I'll transfer this energy to the active. Um, Koopa wasn't able to get an attack off just yet. I will go ahead and full blitz. I think I'm gonna power up to Zeraora. Although, there is merit to powering up my cell. And then, that essentially tells my opponent, if you don't bench Mew, then you're gonna be in trouble. Uh, well, yeah, let's be greedy, right? Let's just be extra greedy. This should be okay. <laughs> Thank you, Alex, that's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. There are some things in the works that might might allow me to to travel a little more this season, despite it not being really cost effective in terms of competing with the Brazilians, but we'll see. We'll see how the rest of the season pans out. It seems like my first big event will be next month, um, will be uh, Brazil. So, and after that, I'll definitely be in San Diego, I'll definitely be in Dallas, because they're so near and there's a victory. And then, I mean, there's basically three events before Austra Australia and Germany, so I might want to do um, Florida as well, just to, to go to every event before the, um, the Germany stipend. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Um, are you going to San Diego or Dallas, Alex, by any chance? I Berserk, you're thinking of playing Blade B. Blounce for your first tournament back from college. What do you think? I think Blade Blounce is a pretty okay deck. Um, it's a really good counter to the tag team decks. Um, it's a little underwhelming against the non-GX decks like um, Pijoro and Malamar, but if you're playing at Cops and stuff, then Pijoro shouldn't be too much of a big threat. So it seems like a good call. Seems like a good call for sure. And then an underrated deck for sure, I'd say. You're bound to have people who underestimate the power of your deck and you'll be able to beat them just by that. Okay. So we are up against a Nidoqueen Pidgeotto deck. This should be interesting. This should be interesting. All right, so a Chikorita to start us off with. I mean, I would definitely appreciate having Zapdos for this matchup, but we'll see. Just to pressure the early basics, because getting a turn one attack off is not exactly easy. Good thing I know that Coco Prism Star is not prized. And I start Jirachi. So I don't know why you would choose to use Pidgeotto instead of... Um, instead of Swampert. I really don't know. So this is looking pretty okay. So <clears throat> here's here's a cool a cool tidbit I guess. Usually I would radar and then for P Garment Dede and then Dede change and etc. But because I have the tax switch, if I find a switching card off of this Jirachi, I will be able to immediately I will be able to get the turn one P Garum. And I have the custom catchers to draw, so I feel like I'm just gonna establish here. Uh, I'm not able to find it, so I will grab the uh, yeah the power plant to thin because now, right now I need. Hmm. I mean, I could just try and draw off of the custom catchers. That doesn't seem great though. That doesn't seem great. So do I play it risky? I have one energy switch after this, it's gone, yeah. I do have three switches though, and the escape board. I mean, I still have the Thunder Mountain and Stadium Nap, I guess. Hmm. I'm not sure. Like, I'd really like to pressure as soon as possible. My Hoopa and my Farfish are prized as well. Hoopa could have been very nice here. Uh, what's the best play here? Nah, it has to be this, I think. Yeah, my chance of hitting Arch is not very high. So I'll bench this, and then I'll attach for sure. 
And then I'll double custom capture <clears throat> the Nidoran. And then let's go for a Tere change. I'm not happy about this, but there's not much I can do about it. Yeah, no switching card. No switching card, no stadium, no energy switch, of course, and no way to guarantee them next turn either. So we'll just have to pass. It's my opponent holding rare candy Nidoquin. Hopefully not. We see the Poke Gear. I might get him a greens. No, get him another Professor Elms. That's kind of good if he's off to a slower start. Well, never mind. Well, rare candy Meganium. Do you already have the Needle Queen as well? Please tell me you don't. Niran, Pidgeotto, and Pidgey. The Pidgeotto might give my opponent the card he needs. Okay. Yikes. I can't get a turn one full blitz, but my opponent can get Rorber Candy, Raw Meganium, Double Professor Elms without Drachi. It is just absolutely awful. Is it just, uh, next card? Well, it didn't matter really. Well, it kind of does actually. It actually kind of does. So I'm gonna radar. Hello, Carl. Thank you so much for being here. And then I'm gonna grab Pikram and Choo Choo, I guess. And then sure, I'll bench him. And I'll go Cynthia. So off of Cynthia plus um, plus Della Wish. I'm hoping I can find a switching card. Okay, I do. I don't find an energy. So thankfully I found the Thunder Mountain. And thank you so much for the host, Carl. Very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. And then, okay. There is a chance my opponent just knocks me out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and full blitz to this Pikaram for now. So we get a prize card. Wish we had gotten one last turn. Because we've also exhausted double custom catchers. There's double Pidgeotto. Much easier to set up than Swampert, I guess. So there's a Froakie. Interesting. Interesting Froakie right here. Attack Bolt next turn will be pretty problematic for my opponent. I would say builds for Pokenav and Rare Candy. Rare Candy might get my opponent a second Meganium. Though he hasn't used the ability yet, so never mind. Well, the ability will probably be for Greninja. It's gonna be Greninja GX. And I feel like if the game at any point just starts escaping my grasps, a reset stamp should do the trick. I've lost one reset stamp, however. So Pokenap doesn't grab anything. He treats into an Aegoin, will attach the triple, I'd imagine. We'll use quick ripening herb first. Goes for the shrine. Gets the triple. Is that a KO? 210. Not quite. Not quite. Okay, so I I've lost my tax, which that means I can't tack bolt this turn. That means I cannot tack bolt this turn. All right, so I definitely want to electro power, and then I'll raid our way these two. Oh, jeez. Or Tetene. 
Well, getting rid of the Volkner was not the best play. Didn't realize my Zerora was gone. Well, prized rather. So I do get the energy. Do I want to attack with Pigram though? <sighs> I feel like I do. Well, full blitz for the knockout and then power up this guy. That seems solid. <sighs> to get the Farfetch, not the best Pokemon to get. So, Granny GX would be a problem because it does get my point three prizes. See a Yurchard board getting attached. We see the Lily for four. Then the double airmail. There's a the Pokecom. Putting back the Nido Queen. The Greninja GX. So goodbye, Pikram. Goodbye, Pikram. I mean, after this, though, my opponent doesn't have that great of, a, of an attacking situation, I'd say. It does get three prizes out of this, though, which is certainly annoying. You can have my Tetenim. See the Poke Gear. For Ericas. Then I see Airmail. If the green just stays in the active, though, we should be alright. Yeah, Stamp. And then if my opponent doesn't get, I mean, does the triple energy even work? It does, right? If he gets the Nidoguin, it does. Does he have the super boost energy in hand already though? Does he have the super boost energy in hand already? That's the biggest question. That is the biggest question here. See the Poginav. For Meganium, we are ranging the other two. Yeah, Stamp would be ideal. Pajuisu or Farfetch'd? I mean, Farfetch'd deals more damage overall um, in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, that third Meganium I thought would mean my opponent would be able to get off the, the attack. But in fact, that was not the case. So, I mean, I'm happy doing this, right? Uh, let's try and get the stamp, which is in there, and I have two Volkners. So I'm going to be drawing a good quantity of cards right here. I guess I could have manually retreated and then switched. I don't find the Volkner though, so I'm going to reset stamp and... <clears throat> I want to make it so that I'm going to knock out the Pidgeotto, right? Uh, stamp, Paolo, stamp. I'm going to knock out the Pidgeotto, that way my opponent only gets one airmail. The triple Meganium doesn't matter when he only has um, two bench spaces open. Tack Bolt should get the KO here, and then the u board doesn't work, so it should not be going back to the hand, right? Perfect. We ourselves get three prizes here. And if he thinks his deck enough, he just wins by Haste Slash and next turn kills something on the bench with a GX. That would be correct. Okay, GX. Um, but the odds of my opponent finding the triple boost, the triple, I don't know, what's the name of that card? The Prism Star quadruple energy, super boost energy, <laughs> super boost energy, um, were very slim. Right, and even if he did, he still had over 20 cards, so he was probably not going to be able to pull that off continuously, especially not after a reset stamp and knocking out one of the Pidgeotos, his deck was definitely going to slow down quite a bit. Pidgeotto is certainly far from being comparable to Swampert because Pidgeotto also doesn't thin, right? You choose two, uh, I mean, you look at two and one goes back to deck, the other gets in your hand, but Swampert actually actively discards and gets you more, um, more card advantage, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, the Pikram deck ended up working pretty well, other than that um, first game where 
we had a pretty weird start. So that will be all for um, for this Pigram deck. I will be right back in just a second after this quick commercial break with the top 8 plus Ephelon deck played by Hunter Butler. We'll see how well it can fare and how well it runs. Yeah, it has a few um, interesting spicy changes to a list that I'm sure helped him out throughout the tournament. So we'll have to see how it breaks out. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. 